time. Is there any members of council at this time? Is there anything to declare? All right, seeing none, we are on to item number four. Uh, delegations presentations 4.1 presentation from GM Blue Plan Engineering West Gray Municipal Landfill Review. I, uh, uh, Director Schwinski, I don't at this point have an identification of who's going to speak. Perhaps you'd be able to assist with that. Absolutely. Uh, and good afternoon, Your Worship, members of Council. Um, essentially, uh, with us this afternoon, I have uh, Alan Bringleson, and he's here from uh, GM Blue Plan. Uh, and um, also in the agenda, we have a PowerPoint presentation to review um, with respect to our landfill sites. And um, and uh, so I think what we can do is if uh, we can load the uh, PowerPoint presentation up on the screen uh, and then we can switch the slides uh, as he uh, sees fit. Thank you. And again, uh, Director Shrinsky, the name of the gentleman that's presenting? Is uh, Alan Bringleson. Perfect. Thank you very much. Well, hello, Alan Pringleson. Welcome to our special council meeting and we look forward to this presentation. Yep, thank you. Uh, just for for uh, sake of um, time, what I'll do is probably just advance. I have the PowerPoint presentation obviously on my computer, so I'll just flip through my own slides and I'll just notify uh, when we should kind of switch to the next slide so that everybody can follow along. Um, Sounds good. So, uh, Vance had asked me basically to provide an overview of the uh, the landfill sites. Uh, the municipality has five different sites. Um, the, uh, actually it might, it may work best to have you guys flip through the slides for me. Then I don't have to flip back and forth and make sure I'm in the right place. So um, the five points, five different areas I'm going to discuss basically for each of the sites. A couple of them will be very quick because they're closed sites with no remaining capacity left. So, uh, but just we'll go through landfill capacities remaining for the sites. Quick overview, review of the annual monitoring reports. Uh, that's the annual monitoring and reporting that's completed to the Ministry of Environment each year. Um, capping and closure plans for the sites. Some of the sites, as I said, are already closed with no remaining capacity. Um, and a couple, um, you're going through the closure process now. Um, we'll have a little bit of transfer station discussion that will be directly related to those sites that uh, do not have capacity remaining, but can remain open as a transfer station. Um, and then waste can still be collected and then trucked or hauled to the Bentink, which would become the regional kind of the West Gray regional landfill. And then we'll just have a bit of brief discussion about future needs. Um, and that'll be mainly uh, open to question and discussion. Um, and future needs, as I, I have discussed a little bit with Vance, is, is really dependent on the long-term waste management planning, what, uh, what we have planned or what, what the municipality wishes to, to, to plan for the different sites. Every site has unique you know, site-specific characteristics and approval framework. So uh, we might as well flip to the next slide and we'll go through. So as I said, there's five sites, Glen Elg, the Glen Elg landfill uh, is currently closed. So this is just a, a general overview. Um, previously, the landfill had a capacity of 20,000. Um, it's, it's been capped and closed since 2007, 2008. That was done under ministry approval. Um, so there, there's no real future operations there under the current approval framework. Um, Based on annual monitoring data, there continues to be little to no evidence of any offsite impact related to the landfill leachate. So one thing that we do, uh, unless you folks are already familiar with the process, you can stop me at any point. But um, one of the primary services we provide is the annual monitoring and reporting. So we're out, we have a crew that goes out, does all the sampling at the landfill, groundwater and surface water sampling. We provide reporting to the ministry. To, to basically summarize the findings of that uh, sampling and the monitoring results. 
as well as the operational aspects of each site. So we have been recommending through that annual monitoring report submission that the actual monitoring and reporting frequency be reduced to once every five years. That recommendation has been made uh, a couple times and we're still just awaiting. So there's a bit of a back and forth process because it's a formal submission, the ministry sends it to their technical review branch to the regional hydrogeologist for review, and then they have to approve and authorize any significant changes. So um, we can go to the next slide. So basically what we've been recommending is a reduction in sampling, monitoring and reporting at the Glen Ellen site. Um, I guess, I'm not sure how you prefer to do it uh, or what your normal council sort of practice would be. But if anyone has questions, I'm open to discussing questions at any point, unless you prefer to wait until the end and do it at the end. We would prefer that you go through your entire presentation. And yeah. at that point, I will say, uh, let me know when you're done. I'll say thank you. And I'll ask members of council if there's any questions of clarity. So please Great. proceed I, uninterrupted. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I've, I've had it done both ways. So, so Neustadt landfill, very similar to Glenelg, uh, no capacity remaining. Uh, the landfill site has been closed since 1992. It's been closed and capped for a very long time. Um, monitoring at this facility still uh, continues under the Ministry of Environment requirements. This is very similar to Glen Elg, where we've actually been we've been doing this monitoring for any many many years and have not shown any evidence of any leachate impact. There's no migration of offsite impact. We've also been recommending a reduction in reporting, sampling, and monitoring at this facility as well. Um, ministry, again, has to go through their review process and actually approve and authorize that recommended. So we're awaiting that. Um, that will be an ongoing recommendation in our report as we have to continue to go through this process of annual sampling. Um, so moving on to Norman B. Norman B has just very recently reached maximum capacity. So each of the landfill sites is granted at the time of the initial approval granted by the Ministry of Environment. They license a, a specific footprint, a landfilling area, and then they also typically approve a volumetric airspace that you're allowed to fill. So each landfill site has a known volume that, that is allowed to be filled. Um, Normanby has recently reached that capacity. Closure and capping of the site is, is, is ongoing right now. And my understanding is that's being coordinated and being completed. Um, I know that uh, the capping soils, so capping refers to the placement of clay soils on top of the landfill which has to be placed to a certain thickness and compacted. And then co final closure includes vegetative cover. So placement of topsoil on top of the clay cap. And then that all gets, it has to be seeded uh, with a vegetative cover as well. So that's the process that you're going through at Normanby. Um, still monitoring and reporting at this site with uh, again, no apparent impact to groundwater migrating away from the property. Um, and it continues to be in compliance with what's called the reasonable use criteria, which is the regulatory process the ministry establishes for landfill monitoring. I think we can go to the next slide. Uh, at Norman B, um, uh, the, the current approval, so the current ECA stands for environmental compliance approval. That is the license basically that's issued, you know, quote unquote license that's issued by the ministry for every landfill site. Um, currently there is no transfer station operations approved under the environmental compliance approval for the Norman B site. So should the municipality choose to use the site as a transfer station on an ongoing basis, there would have to be some amendment made to the current ECA. That is something that we've done at many sites around Gray and Bruce. Um, it's what we consider to be a relatively simple amendment 
there will have to be some supporting documents and an updated site plan that just showing uh, the transfer station, where it would be located, what it would kind of generally, what it would consist of and look like. And then the submission is made to the ministry. They amend the existing approval and uh, that would allow the operation of a transfer station for Normandy. We can go to the next. So moving on to Durham now. Uh, Durham, very similar situation to Normanby, where just very recently the capacity for waste and daily cover has been reached. Um, that has been kind of a process that's been monitored relatively uh, carefully over the last five years through surveying, through ongoing updates to the capacity um, and updates and notifications in the annual monitoring report notifying what the remaining site life is. Um, so there, there is capacity still available, but that capacity would represent only the placement of the final cover and vegetative cover. So when I talk about final cover and capping, the ministry has uh, within the landfill standards, which is a set of uh, guidelines and standards for the closure of landfills, they specify that a minimum of 600 millimeters or 0.6 meters of clay has to be placed and compacted covering the waste. And that 150 millimeters, which is six inches of topsoil has to be placed and rolled. And then it has to be seeded with vegetative cover just so that um, you can establish a root system there, vegetative root system, so to prevent erosion. So those are the, the, the most simplistic way to describe closure and capping of a landfill. So the capacity that's remaining at Durham only includes the placement of that soil cover and capping. So there's a closure plan that's currently being completed and that's under the requirements of the environmental compliance approval. Um, my understanding is the municipality has prepared for closure of the Durham site uh, with transfer of waste being coordinated to the approved Bentinck disposal site. We'll do Bentinck last because it has, uh, it is becoming your primary operation, like operational facility with, with significant capacity and site life remaining. So the, the plan uh, from what I can see would be that the other sites that have reached capacity around the municipality could be set up and established as transfer stations. Residents would still be able to dispose of their waste in a normal, like the same way as they have been consistent with how they've been to date, but it would ultimately all end up in the Bentinck landfill site. So um, just going over the annual monitoring report review uh, as an overview, the, the monitoring data, um, it does suggest that there is migration of leachate to towards along the west property boundary. The benefit that the, the municipality has is that that consists of a union gas or a natural gas easement there. So it's not like it's a private property, which is helpful. Um, and then there's quite a, an additional distance between the next private property and the boundary of the landfill. And when we talk about distance, that, that's significant because the leachate is migrating in the subsurface with the groundwater. And the more distance you have for linear travel of the groundwater, the higher attenuation capacity that's available to attenuate or deal with the leachate. So basically just through natural processes, the more land that you have from the boundary of your landfill to the next closest private property represents um, the, the, the potential for attenuation of any leachate. So reduction of the leachate strength and reducing it to a point where it's not considered an issue by the ministry. In this case, what has been recommended by the ministry is that the property to the west be registered as a contaminant attenuation zone or CAZ, CAS land, we call it CAS lands. Um, that is a formal process 
that several municipalities go, have gone through. Uh, it's, it's a pretty routine process. It's, it's usually done through the legal, uh, well, it has to be done through legal means, so registered on title. Um, it does not remove the use of that property by whoever owns it. So in this case, if it's a union gas easement or a gas property, there would be no restriction of use to them, but it would just be registered and recognized on title that that property is being used for further attenuation of any landfill leachate. So that's a quick discussion of what that CAS registration, what it is and why you would do it. Um, we haven't seen, we, I, I have not experienced any municipality that's regretted obtaining further CAS lands because it does benefit the operation of the landfill. So based on, um, I'm just up on the last bullet point here, there's also been a recommendation by the ministry to consider an evaluation of the, what we've called, the, these maybe historical names, I'm not sure, but the Caswell and the Martins plastic water wells. So there's two supply wells in close proximity to the site. Those are both to the south southeast, I believe, of the landfill site and adjacent to the old closed portion of the landfill. Um, we've, there's some merit in doing that, mostly just to show that there's no reason for concern. We, don't, we do not believe there's any reason for concern there, particularly because these would be deep drilled wells in completely separate hydrogeologic units that would be separate from any landfill leachate in the shallow over groundwater. Um, but I've included it here because it, it does represent some additional assessment that the ministry has recommended. So we can go to the next slide. So go, uh, moving to a consideration of the transfer of waste. So for example, at the Durham landfill specifically, each, because each landfill has its own site specific environmental compliance approval or license as we kind of call it, that's issued by the ministry. Uh, the Durham environmental compliance approval includes condition 10, which is a specific uh, set of guide, guidance or, or standards basically that, that says that the municipality can transfer waste and recyclables away from the site. Uh, this is included in here, it's significant because it, with this condition already allows the transfer of waste from Durham. Um, the thinking as going back to, to uh, what we talked about a couple minutes ago, uh, if Durham is at capacity and can no longer be used as uh, for landfilling or waste placement at the site, it can be used as a transfer station, but waste can be, a transfer station would still have to be constructed and set up appropriately. Um, but then all that waste could be transferred through the existing conditions in your ECA to another uh, landfill site. Um, uh, that's just basically an overview of this whole entire slide. So we might as well go to the next slide. So now moving to Bentinck. Uh, again, this would represent the remaining operational facility for West Gray. Um, it has a licensed area of 20.2 hectares, lots of space. It has an approved volumetric airspace capacity of 227,400 cubic meters. That ex that's for waste and daily cover only. So that, um, that volume excludes the final cover and capping that I talked about earlier. Currently, uh, as of the end of 2020, there's a remaining capacity of almost 200,000 cubic meters. That represents a site life of about 40 years. Now I will, um, I will just kind of clarify that site life a little bit because we always calculate site life based on a five-year moving average. The five-year average uh, is a calculation of the most recent five years of the annual fill rate for that specific site. So uh, the reason I'm bringing that up is in the last five years, Bentinck will have had its own service area. So it will have been receiving waste from its particular service area 
but as Normandy and Durham close, and because Glenelg and Neustadt are closed, it will become the landfill site for West Gray, and therefore the annual fill rate is going to increase because it will have to accommodate the entire municipality. So that site life will be reduced accordingly once the fill rate increases. It, it will not significantly reduce the site life, but it will change it. So um, we've made a recommendation for annual topographic survey there. Um, that would be conducted in the fall of 2021, which is part of the standard monitoring program that we complete anyways. But we do that uh, to update the remaining capacity to update the fill rate and the site life. And all of that information is presented within each of the annual reports that goes out. The, um, the interesting thing I'll just say about Benting is it has progressed. So the actual uh, waste placement at the site historically has been subgrade only in trenches. So placement of waste in a long mapped out trench. Um, and all the waste placement has been below surface. But that the trenching portion of the site development is is done. And the next phase or the next stages of development of the site are going to be completed on top of those trenches. So it will be all using the area ramp method above grade. And the, the annual surveying will become more critical for determining site life and capacity removal. So we, we can go to the next slide. Still looking at Bentink, just a quick overview, review of the annual monitoring report. Um, yeah, that first bullet is basically what I was just discussing regarding surveying and uh, accurately kind of measuring the amount of waste going in. That will be a big part of the long-term waste management planning for the site. Because it's becoming the only operating site, um, obviously we want to maximize capacity and maximize the site life. So as I said, the progression of waste placement will be moving from a subsurface trenching method to the above grade area ramp method, um, which will be conducted on top of the previously filled trenches. And the ministry has recommended further investigation into the condition of one of the key monitoring wells. Um, it's been damaged and it has not been able to be sampled for the last couple of years. So um, just looking at what one of the outcomes of the annual monitoring been recommended to either be removed or decommissioned from the monitoring program if it can't be repaired. So we can go to the next slide. Uh, so now looking at <clears throat> just basically a big picture landfill needs discussion. Future needs at each of the sites is really dependent on the long-term waste management plan and what the municipality is planning for each of those facilities. It, it, it could change the, the needs for Bentink is going to be very different than the need, say, for Newstead um, or any of the other sites. So it, each site has specific conditions and each will have a different need. But the key site right now is basically Bentink will become the primary waste disposal site with remaining capacity and site life. It allows um, for a focus of personnel plus um, financial investment. So what, what we've seen at some other municipalities where they've gone through the exact same stages in their waste management planning, you know, of having three or four municipal sites all operating all at once, three of those close and they're left with one, you can actually then focus um, investment in things like uh, landfill waste compaction equipment, potentially a landfill shredder, um, better front end receiving area, better control of divertible material, that kind of thing. So uh, this next bullet is basically just saying this, it, it does allow for a focus of personnel and financial investment into one operating facility instead of spreading it out amongst what you used to have was five. So example needs would be transfer of waste out of the all of the other sites and into Bentic. So um, that may result in the need to change the front end receiving areas of the sites to allow for transfer stations to be operated. Um, closure and capping of closed sites that still have not been capped. Durham would be an example. Um, 
where the capping and, and final closure still needs to be completed. And we can go to the next slide. I think that might be the end. That was just uh, uh, leading to any questions and comments. I'm sure this will generate some discussion. Thank you very much for your presentation. And um, I would ask that we return to gallery view. And while that's being done, I'll pose the question, members of council, are there any questions of clarity with regard to the presentation from GM Blue Plan and uh, Alan Pringleson? Um, all right, beginning with Councillor Hamilton, then Councillor Hutchinson. Go ahead, thank you. Thanks, Mayor Robinson. I just have one question to get us started. And thank you for the presentation, it's very thorough. Um, regarding the Norman B um, landfill, uh, are we able to uh, continue with the transfer station that we have right now, um, or do we have to wait until we get formal approval? Um, and how long would that formal approval process take? I, I think you mentioned it was a pretty simple process, but if you could just provide a timeline as well. Thank you. Sure, yeah. Uh, so the existing operations there can continue. The ministry is already aware of the operations. It's more a process of um, having it recognized in your approval. And so the ministry prefers to have, okay, you're transferring waste, let's get it recognized in the approval, just so that there aren't any compliance issues. So it's more or less a, a compliance kind of slash liability issue, not a concern, but just something to get, make sure that uh, there's no potential concern moving forward. The timelines um, are somewhat, I'm pausing only because the timeline is somewhat difficult to predict with submissions to the ministry. They've been affected like any of us with COVID and it's been a challenge in the last couple of years. Uh, however, I will say it's, it's gotten better in the last several months, in the last couple of months. Uh, more ministry personnel have come back on board. So as an estimate, I would say three to three to six months is probably a reasonable expectation in terms of timeline. Great. Well, thank you very much. That's that's all I have for right now. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hamilton, Councillor Hutchinson, and then Councillor Townsend. Yes, th thank you for the presentation. Um, just a couple questions. Um, talked about uh, annual monitoring of the uh, Ganelga Newstead site, um, which are closed. Uh, yep. There's a cost involved in that, and I can't remember how much that is, but maybe our director can uh, give us an idea. There is a certain amount of cost that we pay every year to investigate uh, or analyze uh, closed sites. Maybe you, France, can you tell us what that is? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I don't. Uh, I I can definitely find out what those costs are, um, and I can try and um, get that um, underway. Um, I'll do my best uh, uh, while we're uh, having this meeting. Um, uh, but I don't have them at my fingertips right now, but that's something that I can uh, definitely uh, get for you as soon as I can. So moving forward, there will be some savings um, based on if we go to a five-year five year, um, analysis rather than a yearly. So that's a bit of a cost savings there because it's been ongoing for a while, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Um, talking about the Durham and the Leachate and the Casland, um, uh, they talk, you talked about attenuation zones. Um, would that something that we may have to negotiate with local uh, landowners if we're going to ask them to have an attenuation zone on their property? Yes, it definitely would. Um, it's As I said, it's typically completed uh, as a legal process. So there's really no engineering to it other than to say um, the more contaminant attenuation zone lands that any municipality can get is, is a benefit. Um, because it, as I said, it represents uh, the linear flow of leachate. The attenuation capacity is based on how much soil that leachate actually flows through. And then there's a, a whole slew of hydrogeological parameters and properties. Um, probably not the best time to go through that. but. Um, yeah, the, the, it's, the more land you can get, the better. And it definitely, because it has to be registered on title and recognized, it is something that is negotiated with. I, I guess the other kicker that we have in there is that our landfill is pretty close to the Salgeen River. So we have to be careful with that, I'm sure, um, and continue to monitor as much as we can. 
Uh, yeah, that is being monitored. I'll just quickly speak to that. That is being monitored already. There, there really are no issues with regard right. to the Thank you. To the sure. yeah. uh, if I may, one part for the question. Um, for sure. You talked about um, Bentic having um, it's twenty point two hectares licensed now. Um, mm -hmm. uh, twenty point yeah, two twenty two point two hectares is licensed now. Uh, Bentic has quite a bit more land there, I believe. And at one point, um, maybe in previous council, we talked about looking to uh, ask for ministry approval to expand that land land site uh, landfill site and is that something we should be looking at now because yes you say it's 40 years but it might actually be 30 or 25 when we start bringing all west gray so we should be looking at maybe trying to get um, additional approvals because there is more land there i believe there's more land there um the expansion process is a tricky one with the ministry. What I'll say is in the last, well, we're getting close to about 30 years now. We're not aware of a single expanded landfill in the province or new landfill. And the reason for that is the ministry is really focused on diversion and recycling and blue box and green waste and um, household hazardous waste and expanding all of those areas of waste management. The, that's their key focus rather than more garbage going in the ground. I don't disagree with you at all. And we all know because of where we live that um, landfill space, like there's garbage being generated and it has to go somewhere. Um, in our area, we don't ship it out and haul it down the highway to, you know, Toronto or London or Michigan or something. So, so we're aware of it. Um, it has been discussed. And what, what I can say is the ministry, there seems to be a recent shift in their philosophy and recognizing exactly what you've just talked about. Um, but the reason I'm, I'm, I'm kind of hesitating is it's a tricky process um tricky in the way i'll define tricky you can spend a lot of money and a lot of time in engineering fees to get nowhere with no guarantee and so i'm not trying to discourage you from doing that i think you certainly need to be aware of it and keep it on the radar and be planning but there there are some local area municipalities who have tried to do this in the in recent years and spent millions of dollars and got nothing. Okay. Well, I so, guess it's a wait. Sorry. Yeah, I guess it's a wait and see process. Um, who knows? Maybe there'll be you know down the road technology. There's something be something else. But we're always going to have garbage of some sorts. I believe. Um, yeah. It's just a matter of what we do with it and how. I, I do believe in all the reducing programs. But um, yeah, just trying to think ahead of the game. But um, I yeah, guess and I agree 100. percent Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. I'm just trying to make sure you're aware of the full reality of it. Uh, the, and, and I'll clarify just a little bit more if I can, just two minutes. So yeah. it's when certificates of approval or what they're now called is environmental compliance approval, when they were issued, the, the majority of landfills in Ontario all received their first approvals back in the 70s, mid to late 70s, some in the early 80s. And most of those approved an area so like this one, for example, 20.2 hectares. And then it was up to the engineers and the municipalities to show within that area, we can create this volume. So we can fill to, these, to this height and we can dig to this depth. And then inside this big bubble, inside this space, we can fit this volume, this, this many cubic meters of garbage. Since, so that was what was initially approved for the site. And Anything beyond that is considered an expansion. And new and expanding landfill sites have their own set of regulations and their own requirements from the ministry versus saying, um, Bentinx given 20 hectares, the first phase, so a lot of them were set up in a way where it said, your first phase of development includes 100,000 cubic meters and anything beyond that volume, you just have to update us, you have to, do a new design and operations plan and a new hydrogeologic study to show how you can fit more garbage in the space we've already approved. 
And we've been able to do that successfully at a number of sites, but that's, that's viewed differently than an expansion. And so for Bentinck or for any of your sites, um, it would be a true expansion or what they consider a new landfill, which is a whole new, it includes EBR, public hearing, hydro, hydrogeological assessment, um, all of the entire EA process, that kind of thing. So it's, it's a time consuming and costly process to try and get it done. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Townsend. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and through you. Um, going back to the, the leachate uh, for um, Durham, you're, you mentioned that there was land that's uh, owned by Union Gas and because of the nature of their business and we don't have to have as much concern, we need an agreement, but we don't have as much difficulty, shall we say, uh, reaching an agreement. And once you get outside their land, now you get into private, which is a bit more difficult. Mm -hmm. Is there a risk over time that we might need to go into the private? Uh, well, that's it's difficult to answer. The the uh, I'll say likely not, and the reason that I say likely not is because the landfill basically there's no more waste placement occurring there. Um, the landfill capacity has been reached. The site will be capped and closed. When that happens, um, it's, it's reasonably well known and understood just through the research and documentation that usually the uh, leachate concentrations reduce over time because there's no more entry. So there's no more infiltration, if you will, of surface water through the waste, through the garbage. There's no more exposed waste, right? The site is now capped, closed, vegetative covers on, uh, the site is shedding water. Um, and so, the, the groundwater quality will improve over time. It's difficult to predict how much time or how much it will improve because it's based on. Okay, I was asking the, the question from a risk process. management perspective. Oh, pardon yeah. me. Um, so uh, it, Alan it, Brinkelson, could you continue on? It should improve with time, yes. Right, okay, I, I, was, I was just trying to manage future risk. You know, if it continued to, um, to not uh, attenuate properly, that you know, you then may end up with a, a risk of having to do repairs of somebody else's land or, you know, mitigated in some way. So, okay, that's great. Um, the other one was for Bentnick. Um, you're talking about a 40 year based on five year average. We're doing a lot more construction. There's a lot more activity going on and there's always waste from that. <clears throat> Does that play a role at all into uh, the potential of affecting that um, at 40 years? Uh, it, yes, it, it would. I mean, the, the majority of that construction waste construction material is divertible. So ideally, it's not going into the landfill already. And it, it, with the changes being proposed and the direction that waste management is moving in, um, there, sh there should be an increase in diversion regardless. So what will increase the, the biggest factor that influences fill rates uh, in our area is population density. So if, if the population suddenly increases significantly uh, on a per capita basis, the average is about a meter cube per person per year. That's kind of a general rule of waste generation. So construction definitely will uh, influence it, construction waste. However, if that's, if we're talking about things like um, framing materials, wood, block, brick, shingles, drywall, the majority of that isn't really entering the waste, entering the landfill anyway. Yeah, I was actually considering both components, one from the additional people to from whatever is left over from construction. So mm -hmm. but, uh, thank you for that answer. Um, from a Durham perspective, that can operate as a transfer station in the sense that it's allowed to transfer materials now. So I'm assuming as of now, nothing will go into the ground. So can it operate as a, a full transfer station? Meaning, you know, we can drop it off today and it'll end up in Bendick whenever, and there's no paperwork with uh, MECP at all, right? The ministry doesn't have any 
requirements for us to change our uh, our approval? What the ministry will want is uh, they'll want an addendum or an update to your design and operations plan that includes the operation of a change. That will be the only item. Your ECA already includes, uh, it already has provisions to allow for the transfer of waste. Um, but the ministry, they, from a, a, a management and overview perspective, they typically want some kind of document that says, we will have this many number of bins with this full storage transfer storage capacity and we will be transferring waste out of our site you know once every seven days or when the bins are full what they don't want to happen is you end up with a transfer station that sits there bins full or or in a, some level of you know state of operation and never waste is not being routinely and regularly moved out of that spot they don't want transfer stations to turn into waste storage facilities. So they do, they will want a document uh, that, that can be relatively simple and it will include the basic operational practice of a transfer station. Okay, and my next question has to do with the, the timing. It seems when Normerby ran into problems Council found out was in, in the previous council. They found out very late in the process that it was at zero. And I'll argue we just experienced the same thing again. What can change so that doesn't happen for vending? So we're finding out after the fact, not as it's moving along. Well, I don't. I'm not sure exactly what the municipal. Uh, practices regarding the annual monitoring reports. So um, I kind of described and discussed that entire process. We go out, we do our annual monitoring, we do sampling, uh, we do operational site inspection. We issue an annual report. Uh, so every, it's usually in about January, February, somewhere around there, there's an annual report that is issued. That's also provided to the ministry. And in that report, it has an ongoing um, discussion of what was filled, the capacity filled throughout the year, what the annual fill rate is, what the remaining capacity is, and what the remaining site life is. We present that in the report as well as in a tab, like a tabular format in a table, um, and that gets updated every year. So I guess I'm just not sure how the council or staff are reviewing that report. Okay. So if you're providing, providing an annual data, update. it's a matter of how they get it to us, correct? Yeah, I'm not sure. Like uh, what I can say for Durham, for example, is like when we first started doing Durham in 2013, ever since that time, we've been updating the annual site like every year. So, it, you know, from one year to the next to the next, it should have been understood that there was five years remaining. Now there's four and now there's two and a half. Now there's one and a half. Now there's, right? So that was provided. Uh, each year. Okay. Okay. And my last uh, on an ongoing I... update. Well, Councillor Thompson, I'm, I'm I'm cognizant that there are other members of council that wish to speak, and um, so I hope you could make this one a little quicker, if you don't mind, please. Sorry if I'm talking too much. No, no, that's <laughs> no. just fine. We need comprehensive <laughs> answers. No, that's okay. Uh, recognizing there are savings if we go to the five year and it gets approved, we're also going to have uh, more expense because Durham will now have to be monitored on an annual basis, et cetera. So I'm assuming well, all that- Durham's be... already being monitored. There'll be Sorry? no change. There'll be no change because Durham's already been monitored for the last 30 years. Oh, okay. There's so no change in monitoring increase. at Durham. So there's not a budget increase then, right? Not for Durham. For monitoring, no. no okay, super. Thank you. And Thank that you. was my last question, yes. Councillor Hergert. Yes, thank you. Uh, some of the ideas that I was uh, questioning have already been discussed, and I appreciate that. Uh, specifically, um, the the uh, extending the monitoring and reporting out to five years and the costs that we could potentially save on going from a one year to a five year. So thank you for bringing that up already. Um, the extension of life or expa expansion of the Bentic landfill. Uh, you've already touched on that. 
Um, I do have a question about diverting goods. We have had people in the municipality that have attended at the uh, landfill and have, um, I guess the term is scavengering for uh, items that are still good and usable. How can we put um, a location at the landfill that where it's a place people could drop items off that are not garbage, but that they just don't want anymore? So it, does that take, yeah. yeah, does that take an amendment to that ECA or no? Uh, it would not, but it would be part of the transfer station um, amendment or addendum. So, so several other municipalities have right in their receiving area, they have a front end receiving area where the public uh, can get to, but uh, oftentimes the public doesn't then go beyond that point to the actual landfill area. And they have what they call like a reuse center or a, you know something like that. Uh, one facility that I'm aware of, they just parked a portable and they call it their reuse center and people can drop off used goods. It, it, um, and it, it was pretty well received at the site that I'm referring to. Um, and I, I do know the public use it a lot. Um, what, when I've gone in there, there's been anything from board games to clothing items to kids' bicycles and that kind of thing. So. Um, if I might continue just real quick, um, in your experience, then what is, uh, what's the best way? I mean, if things haven't, if things have been in there for a month, do you just scrap everything? What, what's the practical side of that for staff that it doesn't become just mm -hmm. a secondary dumping location that people don't have to pay for? Yeah, that's a good point. And it, it does increase some of the, um, the onsite operational effort in terms of staff that have to, you know, uh, go through there and operate that facility and sort through and what's here and what's junk and what's not. I would, uh, I'm not actually 100% sure what they do if there's items that sit there for a very long time. I would assume it ends up in the landfill. Anything for the landfill Yes, I do. So uh, we also have a, an at least one new subdivision two in the works for Durham and we obviously expect to have some population growth in Durham is there anything else that you uh you know having reviewed the uh, the ECA are there any other items that we should uh take up or you know we haven't been made aware of that are opportunities that we just we don't presently have going for that ECA um what, what we've, so what I'll say is we do about 35 or more now different municipal landfill sites through a, a number of counties. What the biggest impact that can be had on the operation of the landfills that we've experienced and site life, because uh, the landfills are beginning to be viewed as an asset rather than just something that's out there. Um, and I would suggest that considering or viewing the landfill as an asset is a, is a wise choice moving forward. Um, the biggest thing that we've seen impact LifeSite is uh, if you picture a cube, a cubic meter, a box, one meter by one meter by one meter, and the, the more I can stuff in that box, the more... The, the longer the storage capacity of that box will last me. So if every year I'm stuffing in one inch, one inch, one inch at a time, well, that's gonna, that's gonna last a long time. That's, that's the, how we should be viewing a landfill site. It's all based on volumetric capacity. And so the denser, the more garbage I can stuff in the same amount of airspace um, means, right? If I, if I have a density of 500 kilograms per meter cubed today, and tomorrow, it's a thousand kilograms per meter cubed. I've just doubled the life site, the life span of my landfill site. Okay. Um, so, so, what I'm saying is things like shredder, um, waste compactor, waste compaction. So, a sheep's foot, steel wheeled waste compactor, um, the, a, a proper operational practices. So, placement of the waste in five, six lifts. 
running over that, blading it. Those are types of things that can go a long way. It's not fancy. It's not quote unquote sexy. You know, it's not like plasma gasification and incineration, and but it's real practical, uh, achievable waste management operations that can go a really long way. So I guess what I'm trying to say is um, if Bentic has become the primary site, it's the only remaining landfill with capacity there's there's potential there to really um, invest in that facility in terms of equipment manpower operations that could go a long way to even if the uh, municipality grows and the annual fill rate increases if the density of waste being placed uh, is is increased then you're still not losing space Thank you. I do have two last questions, and I will try and be quick with these. All right. the, well, the wells that were mentioned, Caswell and Martin Plastics, and then the TP3 uh, at Bentic, mm -hmm. um, those wells are, could you tell me how frequently those are monitored? Well, so Cas if Caswell and Martin's Plastic are not being monitored currently. So that's why the ministry has actually recommended, because so what, what the ministry has tried to say is you should add some other monitoring wells. And what we argued was why add more wells when we have these existing wells close by that we can show there's no impact to the water supply at those locations. So if we just assess those and do some sampling there, um, the ministry has typically been accepting of the fact that you don't have to pay then to retain a drilling contractor to add more monitoring wells to your monitoring network. And sometimes with time showing that year after year for a period of, you know, five years, say, uh, the Martin well or the Martin's plastic well and the Caswell well are not showing any level of impact, then you can remove them from the monitoring program and then there's no further need to continue monitoring them. And your final question, Councillor Herkert? Uh, yes, um, annual topography mapping. What is the cost of doing that annually? on each of the landfills or we, will we consider just doing Bentic? Yeah, so once the other, now that the other sites are closed, we don't have to update to topographical surveys at them at all. Um, but Bentic, we've recommended an annual survey that that's conducted as part of the annual monitoring and reporting program already. Okay. Um, and we do that so that we can update the fill rate, the capacity that's been used, the site life and the remaining volumes. Okay, thank you cost, very much. Costs for that are around $1,000. Oh, good, thank speaking. you. Yeah. All right, Deputy Mayor Hutchinson, please. Thank you, Mayor Robinson, and thank you very much for your presentation. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just curious if, when the ministry is to sign off and allow a five-year inspection schedule uh, versus a one-year, and stuff that did take place during that five-year period, where would the liability lie if, you know, just say something, in three years into uh, the five-year inspection or four it doesn't really matter but is there any liability on west gray or no, no, no like, like uh, uh, if, if the ministry, the ministry has, has signed, signed off and approved, and approved on, on that, that um deputy mayor could you please turn your mic off uh, please go ahead a little feedback there so that this is a scenario that really only plays out when the groundwater quality uh, is suitable for that. And so we're monitoring and every year that we're monitoring, we're updating the historical. So we have historical groundwater data for the last 30 years for these sites, in some cases longer than that. Um, and so one of the things we do is we always do a trend evaluation, a long-term analytical trend, and we update that. That's included in the annual report as well. And when that trend is stable, for a long period of time, meaning the typical leachate indicator parameters that we look at, um, none of those are increasing, they're not trending upward, they're either in decline or they're stable. Uh, and that's been ongoing for a long period of time. That's when that recommendation to reduce the monitoring program takes place. So that's the, that's the scenario we're in for both of the sites we've made that recommendation for. We've basically said to the ministry, look, look, these guys are paying, the municipality is paying for this every year. 
All of the long-term data we have suggests they don't need to do it every year. Once every five years is suitable. So once they sign off and agree to that, there really is no liability. Thank you very much. And one other question, Mayor Robinson, because uh, I know we've uh, used more than enough time. Um, regarding organics, um, I, I've talked to other municipalities and cities that have gone into heavy into organics. And in your expertise, I, I think there's a tremendous amount of, uh, of, of diversion right there through the organics. So mm -hmm. what are the restrictions or is there any, you know, to, for example, went benthic. If we were to look at one part of it, we know we got more land there. But to get into some of this organics and, and try to divert, like how difficult is that? And it, you know, it, is there that much tonnage and savings? Next. Yeah, excellent question. So we've done a number of long-term waste management plans for other local, municipal, and county uh, clients in the last couple of years. And I'm only saying that because it's recent data that we've looked at. Um, I would suggest that, that the biggest potential for increasing diversion for any local rural municipality in our area is through organics separation. Um, there's some, in, I know that based on the data we've looked at, it's, it's between 30 to 50% uh, increase that could be available. So um, the trick to doing that, so s several sites have, establish compost, like licensed compost sites. And the ministry treats a compost facility differently than they do, you know, a leaf and yard waste site. So at most of your sites, you'll already have like a, a leaf and yard waste area where people might come in and just dump off their grass clippings and whatever. But to do an actual compost facility, um, it's not that onerous, but there will there's a monitoring requirement. There's a specific operational plan that would need to be completed. There's typically a requirement to turn, you know, to windrow the material, turn that material continually, uh, introduce oxygen because compost really doesn't. It, it can become um, anaerobic or septic where it. Mm -hmm. it it's not going to break down unless it's in the presence of oxygen. So you get a big pile of green waste. It's not, it's not decomposing and it gets stinky, right? Those are the big public sort of complaints or concerns related to this. Um, but it, it's definitely a, well, it's definitely probably, it's what we consider probably the biggest way that municipalities can increase their diversion and meet a lot of those diversion targets. So yes, you would have space to do it. There would have to be a ministry approval process to get that moving forward. Um, we have experience doing it. We could certainly look into it in more detail if that's something you wanted to do. Deputy Mayor, anything further? All right, um, Councillor Hamilton, please. Thank you, Mayor Robinson. Just a couple further questions. Um, could the director provide an update on um, the waste diversion uh, study grant um, that council approved about 10 months ago. Um, and that was through FCM Screen Municipal Fund and, and could see up to 60% of our waste being diverted. So just looking for an update on that, please. Thank you. So we'll um, ask, certainly ask that question to the director when we get to his report. Oh, sure, um, okay, it, that's a good idea. I think that's a yeah. perfect dovetail okay. into it. So I'll come to awesome. you first. Sure, okay. uh, thank you for that. I do have one well, last counselor. question. Mm -hmm. uh, one last question for our presenter, uh, Mr. Bringleson. I was just reflecting on how um, at our landfills, we measure um, for our residents, we measure their, um, their garbage by weight. Yet when we talk about capacity, we're talking about volume. Mm -hmm. And so I was wondering if there's any technology or ways of billing for, um, billing for garbage that would take volume into consideration. If that's something um, some municipalities have done. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> it's a good question. I'm not aware of billing for volume. There's a direct conversion. And the problem with my uh, problem, the reality with the conversion is um, the, the volume of loose waste that's sitting in a bin or sitting in a pile at the bottom of the landfill obviously is very different than 
the volume of waste after it's been compacted. And so that's where the whole uh, compaction equipment comes becomes significant. Um, so the, there is a measure where you can convert mass to volume. It's based on the density of the flake weight. Um, there's some there's some um, rules of thumb there, and there's some there, th this has been studied ex uh, pretty exhaustively, um, where it's been all kinds of experiments done on equipment. Uh, from dozers to rubber tired loaders to compactors, different sizes and weights of compactors, how many passes they make over the garbage. Um, does the dozer have a loader bucket? Is the loader bucket full of sand? Is it not like just to add ways to increase the density? Um, so sorry, specifically to your question, I'm not familiar with a technology to charge by volume. But the mass that is being generated, so the ton of waste being generated by residents is ultimately is being converted to volume based on a calculation of the density of the place waste. So I don't know if that answers your question the way you want it to or not, but. <laughs> no, I think that's a, that's a fair answer. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Kelser Townsend, by my estimation, you've had your five minutes um, speaking to this with regard to 17.6. Uh, is it just absolutely quick? Um, because we do need to move on to the rest. And, and it's certainly not being rude, but I'm just following the procedure. So is, is your item extremely quick that we can address or is it something that can we put over to the director's report? Um, I hope it will be quick. Um, it's similar to Councillor Hamilton's book from a different perspective. If the recycling and waste management changes that are coming at the province, would they impact um, the diversion at all or just the collection? Thank you for that. Alan Bergelson, are you able to address that rather quickly? Uh, that's a really big picture question. It's difficult to give a quick answer. It will definitely have an impact okay. and it should increase diversion. I mean, that's what I can say, but there's a whole slew of unknowns regarding that. Okay. Um, at Thank this you. Point. Thank you both. Okay, well, uh, Alan Bergelson, that was an, an excellent. Uh, overview and presentation and and you could tell our members of council are most interested in this um, asset in terms of how to deal with it and we very much appreciate the, the West Gray Municipal Land Fill Review. Thank you for that. Um, Thank you. So yeah. Now we are moving on to item number five, staff reports. 5.1, Director of Infrastructure and Public Works. 5.1.1, Landfill Operational Summary. Um, I'm Sorry wondering. You, I'm assuming you don't need me for this for this portion of the meeting, or do you still need me? Um, I think it would be wonderful if you could stay. But uh, okay. Director yeah. Schwinski, oh. did you have a um, a plan in place in terms of whether Mr. Bringelson will be required? I would have expected you would have had this conversation previously. It would be beneficial if he could stay. That would be great. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for the question. Okay, so with this in mind, Clerk Sharbeck, could you read the recommendation at hand? Through you, Mayor Robinson. The recommendation is that uh, Council receive the following operational summary of Council directives provided for West Gray landfills, and further, that the proposed operational changes be implemented on January 1st, 2022 and film plastics and expanded polystyrene recycling begin November 1st, 2021. Is there a mover for this motion? Councillor Hamilton, is there a seconder for this motion? Councillor Hergert. I would like to move an amendment at some point too. Okay, thank you for letting me know. Um, are there any questions on the motion here? And also I'm going to ask Director Schwinski, do you have um, any presentation or information that you would like to present to us at this time? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, essentially the report speaks for itself. I just summarized uh, where we are up to this point um, and uh, council will notice um, uh, I've put in some uh, changes for uh, hours of operation to make them all essentially uh, eight hours. Um, and, uh, and I can speak to any questions that council may have with respect to that. Thank you. I see a question from Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. Well, thank you, Mayor Robinson. 
um, and through you to, to Director Sawinski. I'm just curious, uh, I know we've uh, asked several times to um, for public consultation at the, more so at the Durham uh, landfill, is how they, uh, the amount of traffic, if you will, on a Saturday and how that impacts, you know, changing from a Saturday. I, I've talked to several people who are the most concerned about that. So I just wondered if we had, uh, that's one, one part of it. And, you know, hypothetically, if it's 150 to 200 um, um, people through that facility in a day, how is Bentic going to actually accommodate if everybody that works out of town or only, can only hit the landfill on a Saturday? How are we going to accommodate that extra traffic in Bantic? So it just it's more of a, one is, did we, did we check and do the numbers or do you have those to share with us? Thank you. Uh, Director Schwinski, please. Uh, I, uh, at this particular moment in time, I don't have uh, all of the um, traffic numbers. Uh, particularly with Durham, I know that this past week, um, I believe we had about 130 cars go through um, in Durham. So I do understand that um, we would have to make, um, um, if uh, should the Durham landfill uh, close on Saturday and uh, we would only have Bentic open, we would definitely have to staff and uh, improve flow through there so that um, we could handle the traffic. Uh, anything further, um, Deputy? Deputy? Yes, thank you. I, yeah, I'm just again, I, I'm I'm a little concerned that we're, you know, we're not in the business of garbage, but we are in the business of garbage or landfill. That's the end of that. We, we can't do anything about it. I, and I'm just I'm I'm a little concerned. I, I you know, Norma B was very flexible. They weren't worried whether it be a Saturday or a Sunday. Um, you know, Sunday afternoon is fine. That gives them the chance to worship Sunday morning. They were all good with that, so they're very flexible. I'm just a little concerned about uh, Durham because, um, you know, there is a, a lot of people that that are not available during the week to uh, to do um, the other alternate days, if you will. And, um, you know, I'm concerned that we're going to be putting a lot of people out of place. Like, I'm just going to use a quick example, uh, very brief. I know that I went one time out to Bentic and I had no great facility, but I was three hours on uh, doing that turn because it was just a huge uh, day out there for traffic. And that was another thing that I was concerned about is the traffic on number three turning into that facility and turning and coming out of the uh, landfill. Uh, it's a little bit concerned because I don't think that road's really in a condition to handle that, that lineup. Thank you, nothing further. Thank you, I see Councillor Hutchinson. Yeah, Councillor Hutchinson. Um, yeah, I, I too have a concern with the Saturday closure in Durham. Um, uh, I know the last couple of Saturdays, I know part of it has to do with staffing and, and staffing is an issue. The last couple of Saturdays I've been to the landfill taking brush because that's quite often what a lot of people do on Saturday is they come in, they clean up, they do some cleanup and then they want to go to the landfill to get rid of their brush before the weekend or the week starts. Um, and um, uh, our public works uh, staff was uh, running the landfill. Uh, they didn't have our normal staff. So I know it's hard to get staff to run the landfills, but I, I do have a concern with when we're putting a number of people on a road on Saturday to Bentic, um, here we are, you know, talking about environmental concerns and whatnot, and yet we're pushing, you know, possibly a hundred plus cars on the road to go to Bentic when we could be sending maybe three or four trucks uh, down the road uh, later in the week. So I have a real concern with that. Um, I don't think um, I don't think it's a solution. We maybe go to two days, maybe go Friday, Saturday in Durham instead of Thursday, Friday. Um, but um, I understand the staffing concerns. I do think there's an issue with closing Saturday in, in Durham. Um, and um, uh, yeah, so I'd like us to maybe rethink that part of it. And um, there was something else, but I can't remember what it was now. So anyways, that's, that's the gist for now. And, and Director Schwinski, and then I'll go to Councillor Hamilton. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I just wanted to remind Council, um, and, and thank you for those comments, Councillor Hutchison and so and uh, Deputy Mayor as well. Um, uh, these changes were uh, also put in place because the the thought was that we would we would try to operate, uh, we would try to avoid operating all the landfill sites all uh, you know on the same day, um, and then that way we could uh, optimize staffing. Um, but um, um, anyways, I just wanted to make that point, Your Worship, and. Um, and uh, that's uh, that's the reason why um, um, we're we're just trying to space out the uh, operations so that if it's open from say Wednesday to Saturday or Sunday, 
um, that you know that no two landfill sites would be open on the same day, allowing us to to staff them accordingly. No further. Thank you, Councillor Hamilton. Oh, Deputy Mayor, was there something? Sorry, Deputy Mayor. I'll be very brief, and thank you, Director Sawinski. And yes, we do support what you're trying to do, and and all your incentives and, and your uh, methodical thinking on how we can save some money. Um, the main thing that we were trying to drive, and I believe we did have this discussion, was that we would engage with the, um, the residents that use that facility mainly in Durham. Um, I know Normanby is very flexible, but to just engage with them prior to making a decision to make sure that we we hit the mark proper. And you know, if Saturday was of that most importance to them to use that facility, or you know, the alternate days, and I, I think that's what we've missed here, and that's the one thing I do want to identify that we get that right. Um, you know, if they're comfortable with going to a Thursday, Friday, and everything goes Saturday to Bentic, then I would gladly support it. But I do think we need to engage in the public, and we need to have that wholesome conversation. And that's uh, my follow-up. Thank you. Councillor Hamilton, please. Oh, thanks, Mayor Robinson. I just have a few tiny questions. Uh, my first question, just a clarifying with uh, the director. I think I think you said at the beginning that you've changed the hours so they're all eight hours. Did I hear that correctly? And if so, um, Norman B is listed as nine to one on the Sunday. So I'm just seeking clarification. Thank you. Director Sherwinski, please. Uh, through, your, through your worship, uh, thank you very kindly, Councillor, for pointing that out. Uh, that, uh, with the exception of Normanby, of course, uh, we're trying to reduce the hours there, yes. Okay, thank you for that clarification. And then, um, oh, could you update us please on the um, waste diversion study grant opportunity? Thank certainly. you. Uh, through your worship, certainly. Um, this uh, particular funding um, um, application and so forth, uh, we've just, we've learned is um, it's uh, quite an arduous process to go through to uh, apply for the FCM green funding. Um, the required documents, for example, would be evidence of consultation with upper government, um, where we would have to, where we would require provincial government documents with our with addresses and so forth. Um, we would also need to identify all sources of funding and establish partnerships um, with respect to um, of who would be contributing to this initiative as well. So I understand that the, the, the notion was to apply for this funding to try to get um, a diversion study completed. Um, and what I, uh, um, I believe, and I, I don't necessarily think that there was any direction provided per se, excuse me. Um, uh, but we we do have $25,000 set aside in the, in the, rash, or the um, modernization funding for this um, waste diversion uh, study and waste diversion plan. So um, the update on the, on the FCM green fund plan or application I should say is is uh, it's it's the success of your application is based on a lot of these documents that I was just talking about in in, in this instance, and I think we would we would be further ahead to um, um, a recommendation to council in discussion, of course, through your worship, is that uh, um, I would recommend that we follow through perhaps with the modernization funding and approach it in that respect. We would probably. Um, achieve our results of getting a waste diversion plan put in place quicker than we would through FCM Green Fund. And that's just um, okay. our observations and what and, and the update up till now. Okay, thanks for that update, a verbal update. And perhaps um, that would come back to council in a, a report on a future agenda. And, and I, if I recall correctly, I, I think that's the place we started from was wanting a waste diversion plan. And then it kind of went in this direction, but maybe we're coming back to a waste diversion plan. But thanks for that update. Um, my other Sir question, Hamilton. Yeah. I was just wondering, uh, do we have confirmation through uh, uh, Director Schwinski that a report will be coming back? And if oh. not, it may be consideration. It, I'm just suggesting that there may be a motion that you potentially may want to do with regard to that. So uh, Director Schwinski, do is this a report that you are uh, addressing for council? Uh, at this point in time, uh, Your Worship, uh, I, I don't have a report coming to Council with respect to the Green Fund uh, status and update um, at, this, at this point in time. I leave it to you, Councillor Hamilton. Okay, thank you. Um, 
Oh, my other question for our director is, I've noticed some municipalities address, um, you know, in the summertime, we've got the issue with heat. I know there's concern with people holding out their garbage every two weeks, the bi-weekly pickup that we have. So there's a heat concern. And there's also, of course, just more yard waste and construction waste. And so I've noticed some municipalities offer a little bit more service at their landfills in the summertime. And so I was wondering, would a consideration for uh, the Durham landfill be perhaps to offer Saturday service during April to October, for example? Would that be a compromise um, from what's in your report as of now? And I just wondered what you would think of that, Director, about offering um, more service on a, on, on a Saturday in Durham during the peak times of the year. Uh, for your worship, uh, most certainly, and thank you, Councillor, for those questions. Um, the uh, those uh, I just uh, there's some, um, and I understand why other municipalities uh, do that, and that's 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 a good idea. However, I just wanted to, um, and that's if, if should council wish to provide that level of service for six months of the year and so forth, as long as they are aware that uh, we'll have to staff up for those operations, then um, uh, by all means, uh, that is something that can be considered um, moving forward. Okay, one last question. Um, I'm assuming uh, most places don't offer evening service because of lighting and safety and this kind of thing, but I guess that was the other question I had. I think the biggest concern I'm hearing um, from people is being able to access um, the, the Durham landfill site outside of their working hours. So is an evening time a consideration or, or not? Thank you. Uh, your Worship, uh... You're, you're absolutely right. Uh, most landfill sites are, let's just say, uh, the, the Durham or the West Gray landfill sites, it, it is kind of problematic with respect to lighting. Um, we, we don't have, um, um, there may be, like, for example, in the Durham landfill site, there may be um, sort of a, 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 what's the word I'm looking for, a better opportunity to provide a lit environment uh, um, to, to, to access it uh, after working hours and so forth. However, say for example for Normby, there's no electricity out in Normby, so there, it, you know, it sort of has to stay open in that uh, that area, that, that you know, midday uh, kind of operation. So you're absolutely right. That's mostly why landfill sites are open uh, during daytime hours and so forth, is because most municipalities don't uh, invest in lighting. Uh, uh, you know what I mean throughout their landfill sites. So yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mayor Robinson, I would like to make um, an amending motion. Okay. Um, so it'd be in two parts. So the first part would be that, um, to find the right words here. Um, um, that, um, that we amend the proposed operational hours for the Durham landfill um, to include um, uh, from April 1st to October 31st to include um, Saturdays from uh, 8 till 4. And I do have one more piece, but I'll wait to make sure the clerk captured that. Very good. Okay, we'll wait for uh, the clerk's uh, language on that, and then I'll look for a seconder. Hi, uh, through you, Mayor. Mm -hmm. um, Councillor Hamilton, could you just re repeat that first part? The council amends mm -hmm. the proposed operational hours at the Durham landfill. And then um, um, to, to add, add mm -hmm. April 1st to October 31st. October 31st. Um, Mm -hmm. To include Saturdays, April 1st to October 31st, from 8 yeah. till 4? Yes, that, please. Okay. Thank you. And I would add one more piece. I guess I would also add, and that okay. um, staff uh, report to council on, um, on the, um, hmm, on the, on waste, reduction and diversion um, study grant and next steps.
great. So we'll just wait for Clerkshire of Act to put that all together in language. I'll come back to you, Councillor Hamilton, to see if the language is correct, and then I'll look for a second. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just through you, Mayor Robinson, Councillor Hamilton, just to recap that the main motion regarding the landfill operational summary be amended um, by um, changing the proposed landfill operational hours to at the Durham landfill to add Saturdays from April 1st to October 31st from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and further that staff report to council on the waste reduction and diversion study grant and next steps. Okay. That, okay. He's nodding and thank you and thumbs up. Is there a seconder for this motion? Councillor Hutchinson. Okay. Questions on the amending motion? Councillor Townsend. Uh, thank you. Uh, I can't support this because it's not just summer that's the issue. In the winter, you're going to have more travel challenges with snow and whatever. And like, if you look at the projection for this year, it's supposed to be humongous. <laughs> so, um, so we're only going to make people travel in bad weather and we'll accommodate them in good weather. And I, I understand your, your intent, uh, Councillor Hamilton, and I, and I think you're right. There's probably a little more um, need for it in the summer. But there's the other side of the coin that if you have to travel in the winter, that's not going to be a pleasant trip for some people that have to travel as far as they may need to. So I won't be supporting it. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Hergert, please. Um, yes, I, I actually second, uh, you know, Councillor Townsend here. I don't think that we should limit it just for the year or pardon me for the summer. I think it should be a year round. Saturday uh, operation at uh, Durham. And, um, and I think that we should just be aware of, of that traveling need, you know, how many cars are going and moving around in the winter time. So I, I would be happy to support it if we didn't have the months in there, but I definitely believe that we need to have Saturday service at Durham uh, for some period of time. Um, I do have some other comments, but just as that, just as that relates to the amendment. Thanks. Councillor Hutchinson, please. Um, I tend to disagree. I think I think it's a possibility that it could work. Um, for one thing, in the summertime, you're not going to be taking brush in the wintertime. So a lot of it is brush compost material. Secondly, uh, in the summertime, there's people who have young children in diapers, and they're the ones that go uh, on a weekly basis because you can't keep those things two weeks at a time. So you, in the wintertime, it's not so bad because they're frozen. If you put them outside or you keep it in a cool place, it's not near the uh, smelly issue. So I think it, temporarily it could be a solution, but I'm, I'm going to suggest that uh, I would like to see a survey of the public uh, to get more input. And uh, since we're, you know, we don't have to make the changes right away, um, that we do a survey, get some feedback, and then if it's going to work, we can put it in place for this winter. If not, then we study it some more and we look at it in the, you know, for the springtime or whatever. But I, I think it's a, a possible solution. Um, and then the other thing I think they throw it there is I think the evening hours could work, uh, especially in the summertime when people are looking for a place to dump some, um, um, you know, uh, brush. So anyways, um, I'll leave it at that. But I, I think it, it is a possible solution. Thank you. Thank you. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mayor Robinson. Um, yeah, I kind of, I support it. To some degree, but the other part, um, again, I the public consultation I, or the input we need that. And the only other thing that I did have a question of is that Director Sawinski did mention that we need to identify that volume, that extra volume of traffic getting into Bentic. That has not happened yet, so I would like to see um, some kind of a solution or what is our plan for that volume of traffic going in, um, so that we can get them off of number three and get a quicker turnaround. So. Before I went and supported something like this, I'd like to see that that plan in place over there, or how are we going to handle it? Thank you. 
Thank you. Clerk Sherbert, could you read the motion at hand? Um, but hang on a minute. Uh, Kelsier Hamilton, just before the motion is read, you have your hand up. Am I permitted to split my own motion into two questions? Am I allowed to do that? Because I, I hear um, there might be support for one, but not the other part. So that's just a question to the clerk. <laughs> clerk Sherbach. Um, I'm sorry, Councilor Hamilton, I'm not sure what you mean. You want to oh. um, amend the main motion. Mm -hmm. um, you want to do two amendments to the main motion. I'm wondering if we should split it into two different amendments to be voted on separately, if that's possible, uh, Clerk Sherlock. And this one has been seconded by Councillor okay. Hutchinson. Yes. Um, if he's in agreement, then where, how would you like it, the question split? Oh, not just sure to divide mean. it into, I guess the first question would be the Saturday hours and the second question would be the report back from staff. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. And if I might speak to the motion. Oh, wait, I'll wait for that to be cleared up. <laughs> Thank Clerk you. Sherbeck, any further comments on that, please? Um, the motion as it stands is moved by Councillor Hamilton and seconded by Councillor Hutchinson mm -hmm. that the motion uh, regarding the landfill operational summary be amended by adding the council amends the proposed landfill operation hours to add or at the Durham landfill to add Saturdays, April 1st to October 31st from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Okay, so that's um, at this point, Clerk Sherbeck, is that you're suggesting we call the vote on that? It, if that's uh, council's wish, if there's no more comments, then um, yes, that's what uh, both the mover and seconder had agreed to go forward with separating mm -hmm. that question. Councillor Hamilton first, please. Just one last comment, Mayor Robinson, thank you. Of course. Um, I do think this finds that middle ground and it's being really responsive to the feedback I've heard since we first, um, dis well, since we last discussed this. Um, and I heard feedback about increased use of the landfill over the summer months, not being able to get there during after working hours and concern for how heat interacts with our garbage. Um, I think in those shoulder seasons, fall and winter, um, we still have curbside pickup every two weeks. So maybe once you got to go to landfill and you'll have to make your way to, uh, to Bentic. I really, I really think this is a good compromise and we'll meet the needs of the greater community. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Director Schwinski, I see you have your hand up. Uh, thank you, Carol, Your Worship. Um, I was just wondering um, uh, to, um, I was just wondering that um, as I'm listening to council's comments and so forth and, uh, and potentially coming up with uh, a bit of a, um, uh, a solution is um, what uh, would council be receptive to uh, if we were to um, open um, Durham on a Sunday? So, for example, if you if we rearranged the uh, the landfill hours where we may have um, you know Durham Durham open on a Friday and a Sunday, uh, Bantic open on a Thursday and a Saturday. Um, that's four days of service. Of course, this would be this would be all predicated by C of A or ECA amendments and so forth um, as as a potential solution. Is that something that council may be receptive to? Genevieve, uh, Clerk Sharback, please. Um, I'm just uh, wondering where we are. We do have right. an amending motion on the floor that's moved and seconded. Yes, um, I know. And, uh, Unless uh, it's council's wish to amend the amendment, um, there might be an opportunity to, to revisit those hours after yes. this is addressed. Yes, uh, Director Schwinski, that uh, is information that is outside the vote. That's why I went to the clerk just for, for clarification. We're focused on uh, Councillor Hamilton, the mo uh, amending motion and Councillor Hutchinson that is has just separated out for um, the change of operating hours from April to uh, October. So that's what we're focused on at this point. Um, all right, Councillor Townsend. 
Thank you. And through you, Madam Mayor, I'd like to make an amending motion to the one on the floor to actually change the Saturday hours um, to be Sunday. And for the okay. uh, and and by the way, we would eliminate Thursday, I believe the director said so it would be to uh, change the Durham hours to be uh, Friday and um, Sunday. And I believe you said an eight hour shift on both days. Well, I'm going to go to the clerk because in my opinion, that is an emotion, uh, amending emotion that is different from what Councillor Hamilton has put forward. And I, I think um, I just want to make sure we're dealing with the motion at hand. Uh, clerk, and I, I'll stop speaking at this point and uh, ask the clerk for procedural support. Um, through you, Mayor Robinson, I just want to be clear that we're able to add those Sunday hours at this time. Yeah, I, my understanding it was dependent on changing the C of A before Sunday hours could be added. So um, we're getting a nod from a uh, director Sherwinsky. We're, we're out of, yeah, Sunday hours really aren't on the table for an immediate right. start. Thank There's you. consideration for if I'm wondering, Councillor Townsend, would it would it be considered um, maybe after this amendment? There could be with this follow up amendment that Councillor Hamilton had about the waste diversion study grant, um, and that perhaps uh, staff investigate um, that adding Sunday hours to our C of A. W would that? Be appropriate to add to the next notice of motion just that we investigate and at least have an answer on you on how fast that might be or how slow that might be i don't know what the time frame is okay if i, if I may madam so, mayor to respond well re really quickly because we are dealing with a, a motion on the floor so this is something that we could deal with afterwards it's regarding the motion actually all right um, first of all I, I saw the mover um nod that she was happy with the November, or sorry, with the Sunday and the shift in that. So maybe the mover is is um, uh, agreeable to making that change and hopefully the seconder is. In addition, these changes are not going in tomorrow. They're going in uh, as of January 1, 22, unless I misread uh, the uh, report from the director. So we have time to work out of the, uh, the authority uh, approval, if you will. It's not like it has to be done um, sooner than that, and it'll have to be done a little bit before that. But again, we'll have time to try to see if we can get it done so we can do it. And if not, then we'll have to look at another option. But I would rather see the motion go through with what we want. And if we hit a stumbling block, deal with it rather than come back and try to change it again later. We just confuse the public when we keep doing that. And they're already confused now because we didn't implement before. So thank you for that. Thank so you. I'd like to see the amendment go forward. So Clerk Sharbeck, we're dealing with, if you could read the amendment on the floor that we are dealing with to call the vote on, please. Uh, point of you, order, Madam Mayor. I, I, I think a point of order about doing that because we have, I have an amendment on the table that I think has to go through. And I think it's up to council to move it forward. And the vote on that one should happen before the other. Councilor Townsend, that's, that's why I've asked the that. Councillor Townsend, that's why I've asked the clerk to deal with the amendment that would be on the floor. That is precisely what I'm asking. Which amendment for. is that? She is going to read it at this point. Thank you. Clerk Sharbeck, please. So my, through you, Mayor Robinson, I'll confirm with Councillor Townsend um, that the amending motion uh, to change the operational hours at the Durham landfill be amended to, I'm not sure if you're adding Sunday or changing to Sunday. So it, it, Councillor Townsend, can you um, add that? Although we may not be able to implement this, it's adding those hours to the C of A is not our choice. We it would change, that. sorry, it would change Thursday to Sunday. To at just at the Durham landfill, correct? That's correct. So 
Uh, let me try this again. Then. <laughs> that the amending motion to change the operational hours at the Durham landfill be amended to change Thursday hours to Sunday. Is that correct? And I think you would add, based on your comment, pending CFA approval. Pending CFA approval. That, that might um, save some trouble afterwards. So it will, so just so I understand correctly, the hours will continue to be Thursday until such time as we get that C of A approval for Sundays. Once this starts, if, if we may have it by January 1st, but we may not, right? Yes, but I think the, I think the recommendation, the original motion, had it as these operational changes were happening January 1. Right. So we've so, still got time. Yes, hopefully it's done by then. But if it's not, we'll wait on the Sunday hours until we can go forward. That's all I'm saying is we don't, if we don't have that approval by January 1. Yeah, we'll have to address it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So That's Clerk Sherbuck, <laughs> if you could read that so that everybody's clear. And we have it moved by Councillor Townsend. Then I, after you read it, I'll look for a seconder. So uh, correct me, Councillor Townsend, if I missed something. Moved by Councillor Townsend that the amending motion to change the operational hours at the Durham landfill be amended to change Thursday hours to Sunday pending C of A approval. Is that at, correct language? Thank you, Councillor. I'll add at the Durham landfill. Very good. All right, I'm looking for a seconder and that would be if to raise a hand. Councillor Hergert, are you seconding? Thank you, oh, sorry, yes, thank you. All right, any comments, Councillor Hutchinson? I'm a little confused. So are we, mm -hmm. are we in Durham, you're talking having the landfill open Saturday and Sunday now? Is that what we're saying? Uh, Councillor, uh, Councillor Townsend, to your motion and the in, in um, inquiry from Councillor Hutchinson. Uh, the, the Durham uh, landfill would be open as a transfer station on Friday and Sunday for Friday. eight hours. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, I still think that what I would like to see us go back to public and get some more input, input before we finalize this. But um, uh, regardless, uh, it's not going to take place until January 1st. But um, I think we need uh, some kind of survey to figure it out, uh, but we can pass the other parts of this um, um, this recommendation in terms of st the plastic and uh, the styrofoam. But anyways, um, I'll vote one way or the other, no problem. Thank you. Any further questions, Councillor Townsend? Is your electronic hand up? All right, thank you. Councillor Hergert then. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. I have a, um, like the same concern that was talked about earlier is we're going to go, uh, we're, we're proposing that we're going to change the hours right now. When we find out if the um, ECA is changed, then we may make some other changes. We're losing the public in this discussion. They're fairly upset that we don't have a weekend hour, you know, proposed for long term. But I think trying to make this change now, getting some more information, getting, getting the public comment, we're right now trying to address the hours. And we, it, it just seems like we still have some research to do. I'm curious from um, our Director of Infrastructure Public Works, what do you need from council today? If, if this discussion about what hours for January 1st um, you know, I, obviously there's going to be some education and rollout that takes time. There's signage that needs to be changed. Do we have a month or two before we actually need to determine the hours? And I say that because that month or two may give us the time to collect the surveys, get the number of, uh, um, of visitors, you know, to, the, uh, to each landfill. Because I think that the Bentic one is crazy busy on Saturday. And to get the people off the road, as has been men mentioned, um, and then to keep people in town to get rid of their waste for Sunday, I think those are all very valid concerns. I just wonder if we have an opportunity over the next month to collect that data and information 
What do you need from us today? I saw Madam CAO's hand up. I'll go to her first, please. Oh, th thank you, Mayor Robinson. And thank you, Council, for this conversation. I've, I've been listening carefully and I'm hearing that a weekend service for all three landfills is probably what this community would prefer. And how can we get to that combination given the staffing restraints that we have? And I'd like to be as clear as I can to repeat Director Sawinski's intro that staffing is a challenge. And in fact, I forget which councillor mentioned that our public work staff have to fill in the gaps when landfill staff aren't available. So this whole project started with us trying to use our crew and rotate them from site to site. And in the meantime, offer landfill options five days a week. So I would like to try to not lose sight of that. And, and since we are talking about one crew that would be rotating, it would be responsible as a responsible employer, it would be nice to give them two days off together. So whether that's Tuesday, Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, you know, we can work through that. If the weekend is the priority, then I'm, I'm hesitant to commit to Sunday right now because we just heard Mr. Bringleton tell us that the ministry has been impacted by COVID timelines as well. And I don't know how quickly we can get anything back with the January deadline. That's not very far away. So at this point, I, I agree, Councillor Hergert, great discussion, maybe a little bit more homework needs to be done, um, but it's been a helpful conversation because you know I, I'm taking away that weekends are the priority and what can we do to make that work? And whether it's a split shift on a Saturday or a Sunday, there's combinations, but we've got a small effective team that run the landfill and we'd like to be able to utilize them more than you know, isolating them and, and rotate them around. I see Mr. Bringleson's hands up. So I hope I haven't said something um, that I misunderstood, but I do know ministry, uh, working with the ministry does take time. So at this point, that's, those are the challenges that we've got. Mr. Bringleson, I'll, I'll permit you to speak at, the, at this time, just if there's some clarity that you could provide because we are dealing with the motion at hand. Yes, I'll just try and clarify. There's been a lot of discussion about hours of operation and how that could potentially be limited by the certificate of approval. And what I'll just clarify is for Durham, the, you are permitted to change the hours of operation through a simple written notification to the local district manager. So that means it's the, um, what we consider in the engineering when we're reviewing these documents to be the easiest way to change the hours of operation. So Thank I'll, you. I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Okay, where are we at members of council? Um, Councillor Townsend, I'm just checking with you again. Your electronic hand is should be down, am I correct? I still have comments on the original motion. Okay, but we're just dealing with the amending motion at this time. Okay, I'll take it down until then. Thank you. Okay, Clerk Sharbeck, could you please read the uh, motion at hand? Yes, um, moved by Councillor Townsend and seconded by Councillor Herbert that the amending motion to change the, operation, the operational hours at the Durham landfill be amended to change Thursday hours to Sunday at the Durham landfill pending um, C of A approval. And I'm wondering, Councillor Townsend, if, if we can remove that now with the clarification from, from Mr. Bringleson. Yes, I was just about to put my hand up to ask for the same thing. Thank I think you. that makes sense. We'll go back to where you started then. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so that's Councillor um, Townsend and Councillor Hergert. You're fine with that change in the language. Thank you. All right, then. All those in favor, indicate with a raised hand. All those opposed. So the motion um, loses as a tie, it's 3-3. Three, three. Clerk Sharbeck, could you go to the next amending motion that we need to address? Um, yes, through you, Madam Mayor. Um, moved by Councillor Hamilton and seconded by Councillor Hutchinson that the motion, um, regarding the landfill operational summary be amended by adding that council amends the proposed landfill operation hours at the Durham landfill to add Saturday, 
from April 1st to October 31st from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Any questions of clarity on the motion? Councillor Hamilton. Thank you, Mayor Robinson. Based on the conversation that we've been having, um, I think I think I'd best just withdraw my motion. Am I allowed to do that? Yes, because you can withdraw. Thank you. No, Council's so seconded. formal. It's no. hard to have that back oh, and forth conversation. Me? To count the formalities of, of council make it difficult to have that kind of back and forth dialogue. What do you think of this idea and get all the information on the table? And now that we've had more dialogue, I think while there's merit in my idea, I still like the idea. I think I would prefer to have staff um, mull it over a bit and <laughs> mull over our options, I should say. Um, so I think at this time, I'd like to withdraw the, my that First Amendment, if that's appropriate. Thank you. Clerk Sharbeck, could you please comment on that for us? Uh, it has been seconded. So it's not just your amendment. It's a motion on the floor now. So we do have to dispose of it one way or another. Um, and it, it's up to council. P perhaps the quickest way is if the seconder, I see he has his hand up. Perhaps he has a comment. Um, if it's not withdrawn by both the mover and seconder, then we need to do something else with it. Okay, Councillor Hutchinson. Uh, yes, I'd like to withdraw my, my second of that motion and I'd like to make a, an alternate motion if I could. So Clerk Charbeck, again, for clarity, not only for council, but anybody listening in with both the mover and the seconder withdrawing, what is the resolve then? Okay, just for clarity and to make mm -hmm. sure that the minutes um, are clear this motion or this amendment um, is withdrawn by the mover and seconder is that correct so it is not on the floor at this time i have an indication from both uh, the mover councillor hamilton and seconder councillor hutchinson okay. both did thumbs up that they're withdrawing their motion and there was um, the original question was separated. So we are now on to these um, before Councillor Hutchinson can add another motion. We're on to the second part of the original question in the motion to amend. So moved by Councillor Hamilton that a staff report or sorry, that staff report to Council on the waste reduction and diversion study grant and next steps. Okay, well, Councillor Hutchinson seconded it originally. Uh, Clerk Sharbet, would the seconder stand at this point? Uh, You're asking me, come I there. think that would have to be clarified again because he withdrew okay. his second. Councillor Hutchinson, are you seconding this motion? That's yes. Thank you. Okay. All right, any other questions on this motion? I'm calling the vote on it. All those in favor indicate with a raised hand. Six members of council have voted in favor. Sorry, I turned my head away. Six members of council have voted in favor. The motion is carried. Okay, so at this point, Clerk Charvac will deal with a motion from Councillor Hutchinson. Is that correct? If, if that's Councillor Hutchinson's wish, yes. Yep, all right, Councillor Hutchinson, uh, can you uh, put your uh, motion forward? So I'd if like to wish. move that we accept the recommendation from uh, our director to move forward with the film plastic and the expanded polystyrene home cycling uh, beginning November 1st uh, with um, the um, opportunity to revisit the operational changes at our landfills and to come bring that back to a, a council meeting in, in the future. Thank you. We'll just have Clerk Sharbeck read that back and then I'll ask for a seconder. So, sorry, Councillor Hutchinson, it's that the main motion to address um, the landfill operational summary be amended to add um, that Council um, shall have the opportunity to, sorry, was it review the landfill operational hours? 
Uh, yes, I think they said revisit, but review is okay. fine. Okay, revisit. To revisit landfill operational hours. Um, is there a time frame? That, uh, um, or well, just in the have, future? Yeah, we have for January 1st down there right now, but I think, I don't know if I'd want to put a date on it. Um, let's just Let's just try to get it right. Um, yes, with public input, if we can add that, would be nice. Um, okay, I think um, I might be missing um, a key piece here. You're wanting to amend the motion so that um, the operational changes not necessarily be implemented January 1st, 2022, or leave the January 1st in there and revisit this sometime between now and then following public input. Yes, we can do that. And if we want it, we can leave that in there. Um, but we may decide to change it down the road, but let's leave it in there for now. Okay, so um, just if Councillor Hutchinson could confirm that the main motion to address landfill operational summary be amended to add that council shall be, council shall have the opportunity to revisit landfill operational hours following public input. Does that, that catch be, it? Should that be staff rather than council? Staff are going to look at it rather and bring it back to council. Um, would you like it to say, um, instead of that council shall have the opportunity to revisit Perhaps would you like that uh, staff will report back to council regarding yeah. op landfill operational hours following public input? Yes, that would be great. Okay. Uh, let me just write that and <laughs> catch up with my writing. Okay, so I think we're set. Okay, and did you? Did we include the film plastic and polystyrene or the um, recycling in there? That will stay in the main yes. motion. So okay. it's going to start on November 1st. Um, we are simply adding to that main motion the uh, report back following public input. All right. So Clerk Sherbert, would you please read the amending motion? Uh, moved by Councillor Hutchinson that the main motion to address the landfill operational summary be amended to add and that staff report back to Council following, oh, regarding the landfill operational hours following public input. Okay. Councillor Hutchinson? I think that's okay. Yeah, I think that's got it. Is there a seconder for this amending motion? Deputy Mayor, are you seconding? Or yes, I'm sorry, going back on it. Thank you. Questions to the amending motion? Councillor Hergert. Yes, I'm curious. Are we going to leave in the remainder of that motion about tipping fees, uh, increasing film plastic, and like number two, three, and four will all stay the same in there? We're only Good. changing number one? Good question. Uh, Clerk Sharbeck, to that. Uh, inquiry. Okay, so um, the motion, the main motion, uh, so far as amended, speaks to, um, oh, just lost Councillor Hutchins, or Councillor Hamilton's, okay, so that Council received the following operational summary of Council directives provided for West Gray landfills. So receiving the report, mm -hmm and that the proposed operational changes be implemented on January 1st, 2022. So I guess in the report, are the fees included in that proposed operational challenge? I'm wondering if um, for clarity's sake, if the hours could be voted on in this motion and the fees in a subsequent motion, would that help clarify um, just the question at hand, that if we, um, 
at the proposed um, operational hours be implemented on January 1st? My, I'm not sure, or is council uh, wanting to include all of the operational changes, the fees and the hours all in one? So uh, Clerk Sharvick, um, that would be on the main motion. And then we're dealing with the amendment at this point, or are you suggesting what you're asking for be folded into this amendment? Just for clarity, please. Um, Okay, through you, Mayor Robinson, for clarity, it's not um, for me. <laughs> I just want to make sure everybody knows that what we're voting on. Certainly. So right now we've got the amendment moved by Councillor Hutchinson. It hasn't been seconded, but what it says is that the motion be amended to have a staff report come back about the operational hours following public input. Mm -hmm. So that will amend the main motion, but it doesn't change that line that the proposed operational changes be implemented on January 1st, 2022. And I believe that was Councillor Hergert's question is, are the fees included in that? And I would say it, to me, I interpret it as yes, even though it could be clearer if you wanted to separate them out in a, uh, maybe the next amendment. <laughs> Okay, and, and this um, amendment on the floor was seconded by Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. I have that listed. Okay, so back to you, Councillor Hergert. So I would like to have a motion to sever. The first part of this is the hours, and I would like to take that up as one item. And then item number two, the tipping fees, three, the film plastic, and, and then four on to the expanded polystyrene. So one motion about hours with a report back from staff after input, and then the second motion be regarding two, three, and four. Okay, um, Clerk Sherbeck, uh, um, just for clarity, the amending okay. motion that we have is dealing with the film plastics and, um, and a report. So I'm just looking for clarity on what it is that we're voting on now and folding in Councillor Hergert's question for sure. But the amending motion that we're voting on now and what the main motion will be should how we however we dispense of this amending motion, please. OK, so where we're at, um, I, I think we need to hang on uh, for a moment before your motion, Councillor Herger. And I'm, I'm wondering if there might be a clearer path to get where we're going. Good. So right now. Um, the main motion is going to end up reading that um, the hours be changed at the Durham landfill. Uh, we've got uh, the plastics, film plastics and polystyrene recycling beginning November 1st, and that was staying in. So just the hours and the film plastic, but uh, the operational changes are also included in there. And I'm wondering after this amendment where we're changing the hours um, and asking for a report back, if there could be another amending motion to the main motion saying that um, the, operation, the motion be changed to address operational hours and not the fees. Uh, I'm not sure. We're it's all lumped in here together, a little bit messy right now. Right. To be honest. But we're moving it, we're moving it along. So I do see some hands, but I would like clarity in terms of the amending motion that uh, we'll be voting on and speaking to. So Clerk Sherbeck, if you could could read that with the um, also the uh, affirmation, confirmation of the mover and seconder on this amending motion, please. Through you, Mayor Robinson. Moved by Councillor Hutchinson and seconded by Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. The, um, the main motion to address the landfill operational summary be amended by adding that staff report back to council regarding landfill operation hours following public input. That's just the one, one question. Okay, so 
Um, the mover, Kelser Hutchinson, are you fine with the language? Yeah, thank you, that's fine. And uh, the seconder, Deputy Mayor, are you fine with the language? Fine. Just, I, I am and I'm not, I'm confused. Uh, so I just wanna make sure I'm clear. So basically what we're saying is we are going to remain, have the hours status quo until we have public input. Is that where I'm at with this, this is my take on it? Is that your, uh, um, actually if I may through you, Mayor Robinson, to the mover, ask if that was the intent, because I believe that's what I was trying to support. Councillor Hutchinson. That's my understanding, that, uh, that we stay status quo until we revisit this. And that's Clerk Charbuck? That's clear. Um, I think then we need to change that January 1st date in the main motion because it's not clear at all that they're staying status quo. Um, so I would respectfully request if the mover and seconder consider um, just a tiny wording amendment here that if that's your intention that the staff report back that um, operational changes um, be implemented following a staff report back to council regarding landfill operational hours, um, perhaps instead of following, including public input or, or after public input. So if you don't want them to be implemented on January 1st, then we have to say that we're changing the motion to remove the January 1st, 2022, and they be implemented instead after a staff report back to council regarding landfill operational hours after public input. I can, I can live with that. And then yes. as a seconder? Yes, thank you, Mayor Rums. That's for, that was the clarity I needed. Okay. Councillor Townsend, you have your hand up? Yes, I do, thank you. The whole point is to, I believe, was to get these changes done at the first of the year. So I'm not sure why we're removing it if we leave it in there to say that they're going to be reviewed with the intent to implement by January 1, January 1 2022. We haven't set a date for any of that portion. So it's kind of wide open. But I heard the director say that he was prepared to look at that and CAO um, was reinforcing that and we still have a date for implementation which I think will make the public feel better that at least they know when all this is going to happen where it is now it's up in the air and they have no clue so I think we're just adding more confusion to the process by not saying that the operational uh, changes um, with their subsequent to a review of the operation hours for the Durham landfill site um, will still be implemented on January 1, 22. That's the, that's, I believe, the intent that we started with, but somehow we've gotten around the horn and now we don't have a date for implementation. So I don't know whether the mover and seconder would um, take that into account or whether we leave it where it is, but I think we're just leaving the public up in the air again. Okay, thank you. Deputy Mayor Hutchinson. Thank you, Mayor Robinson. And uh, just in response to that, I, I understand what you're saying, Councillor Townsend, but I, I think what we're doing by putting a date on is we are basically telling them we kind of determined a decision on this. I would rather that we have the wholesome conversation, get it out in the public. I'm sure we have uh, the landfills are open every Saturday. This is something we could address over a three, four week period. Get a good feel for what they want. Get it back on the agenda in November and we could probably move it forward. But I'd rather let the public have some input onto these decisions and the services that we provide, and then we follow the lead or what comes back from them. That's where I'm standing on this one, and I think that you know, by giving it a deadline, they're thinking, well, they've already made up their mind, uh, regardless of what the decision may come or the outcome. So I just wanted them to be engaged prior to it, and then we can work it from there. Thank you. Councillor Townsend. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Can we put a date on the review? And that way we still have a deadline. If, if we're saying we can do it, I don't know, by the middle of November, uh, and I'll ask the director to weigh in, 
uh, on that and how fast he thinks he can do that. And then at least we have a deadline with an expectation. Right Director, now we don't have any. Director Sharinsky, any comment? You're on mute. Uh, my apologies, Worship. Your Worship, I got several screens on the go here. Okay. Uh, so, so uh, uh, as far as a date goes, I would submit that uh, to gather all the information that I need and so forth and come back to council. Would the uh, second, would the would the second meeting in November be adequate? Would that be okay? what's how you can provide that information to us. So thank you. Um, Madam CAO, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just wanted to um, clarify the C of A um, adjustment. Uh, I'm not sure, I, I understand uh, Mr. and he's, he's not with us any longer, indicated a simple letter for Durham. I don't have that clarity for Norman B though. So I don't know if that's a, if that's a piece of timing which is why I'm a little nervous about committing to a date. I think that actually confuses the public more if we say a date and there's factors beyond our control that make us change that date again. That causes just as much confusion. Thank you. So with that, Clerk Sharbet, could you please read the amended motion at hand and then I'll call the vote, please. To you, Mayor. Moved by Councillor Hutchinson and seconded by Deputy Mayor Hutchinson that the main motion to address uh, a landfill operational summary or regarding the landfill operational summary be amended to remove quote January 1st 2022 end quote and add quote that staff report back to council regarding landfill operational hours after public input. All those in favor indicate with a raised hand. Uh, all right, all those opposed? Five members of council voted in favor. One member of council voted in opposition. The motion is carried. Clerk Shabak to the main motion, I believe we're on now. Okay, the main motion, just a quick recap of where we've been on this so far. The main motion as it's printed on your agenda. And um, there was a motion to amend it to change Thursdays to Sunday. If you recall, that was a 3-3 vote, so that was defeated, it's not included. The second vote um, actually was not a vote, it was to um, add Saturdays in Durham from April 1st to October 31st, that was withdrawn by the mover and seconder. There was no vote, so that change won't be included. The third um, amendment, um, was that staff report to council on the waste reduction and diversion study grant that was carried. So that will be included. And the fourth vote is this that uh, we report back after uh, the public input. So that'll be report, re, uh, included in the main motion. So that's where we're at. So let's try the main motion now and see what it sounds like. Uh, moved by Councillor Hamilton and seconded by Councillor Hergert. The council received the following operational summary of council directives provided for West Gray landfills and further um, that the proposed operational changes um, be implemented following a staff report being brought back to council regarding landfill operational hours after public input has been received and further that film plastics and expanded polystyrene recycling begins November 1st, 2021. And further that a report staff report to council on the waste reduction and diversion study grant and next steps. Very good. All right, just any questions before I call the vote, Councillor Townsend. Thank you. This is the one I alluded to previously, Madam Mayor. Mm -hmm. um, what I'm seeing um, in uh, the Durham, Normandy area is, and elsewhere, but more it seems here, is a lot more 
uh, garbage on the roads and et cetera, which I think is uh, what my, one of my fears uh, is because of uh, reduced hours. But in addition, um, I had some comments regarding waste management, not taking bags, and then they sit there for days. And so I'm really afraid that if we don't address that with our change of hours, we might end up with more sitting by the roadside. So I'm not sure what happens to a bag once they say that they won't take it, so they leave it. And I am assuming the owner is supposed to, the homeowner is supposed to remove it, but when it doesn't happen, what happens? And how do we well, address that? It does get worse. Yeah. Director Sharinsky? Certainly, uh, through your worship, uh, if, if um, um, through your worship, if a bag is left on the side of the road, and it is because for um, because it it, it um, first of all, if if bags were missed, we make every effort to try to get them collected, whether it's through waste management if they accidentally miss it or. Um, we will do what we can to make sure that that gets picked up some way, somehow, if there was an accident and it got missed. If the bag was left there because it was unsuitable to be picked up and it's not acceptable, then it's up to the homeowner to remove that bag, like you're just saying. If it gets left there, um, uh, then uh, that's a good question. If, if we're aware of it, uh, hmm. Normally staff will make every effort to pick those bags up if they're aware of them or deal with the public and call them and let them know and communicate. Um, um, and I, we can work on that, improving that uh, as we move forward, Councillor. Uh, it's a good question. Um, but uh, essentially, um, if we're not aware that those bags have been left behind, it's hard to, 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 to figure out what to do with them. And, and it's, usually, it's usually on the owner's, it's the owner's responsibility to get that bag out properly for collection day and removed if it's not acceptable. Anything further, okay. Councillor Hutchinson? Yeah. Oh, pardon me, Townsend. <laughs> That's okay. Um, thank you for that. It just seemed very strange that I was getting three or four calls in a period of uh, about 10 days when I don't get many on waste management like that at all. So that's why I wanted to share it. Thank you. Thank you as well. Any other questions on the main motion? All right, I will call the vote on the main motion. All those in favor, indicate with a raised hand. Six members of council have voted in favor of the motion. The motion is carried. Mr. Charbeck, just keep me on track here. I believe we are in item number six. Will that be correct? Yes. All right, item six uh, on the adjournment. Could you please read the recommendation at hand, Clerk Charbeck? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the recommendation is that we now adjourn at uh, 444 p.m. to meet again on October 19th or at the call of the chair. Is there a mover for the motion, Deputy Mayor? Is there a seconder for the motion, Councillor Herger? All those in favor indicate with a raised hand. <laughs> Six members of council have voted in favor. The motion is carried. Thank you one and all for a delightful afternoon dealing with uh, uh, landfill priorities that we need to deal with and, and very good discussion, uh, count, uh, council and staff and for our community. Well done, talk to you again. Bye now.